Hello everybody, welcome to this live stream and book review of a vintage pattern cutting book with lots of drafting tips. I hope you can hear me because I was a little bit late because I had technical issues, so do let me know. Um, I'm going to say hello to everybody, then I will do a review of all the great things this book book is good for, which is both for people making their own clothes and also for people making clothes for other people. And then if you just type your questions out as I'm talking about it, at the end of the review I'm going to answer any questions you have or flip back to pages I might have missed, stuff like that. Um, so do feel free to um, put anything in the chat at any time and I'm, I can see Laura and Beth. So hello Laura and hello Beth. I do hope you can hear me. Um, if you haven't, do please press the like button because it always helps with um, letting other people on YouTube know that I'm live so more people can learn about vintage pattern cutting. Um, and hello Astrid. Yes, technology is not always great and I, by now I should know it. And even now as it is muted, but I hope you can hear me. I have lots of echo, so I'm not sure what's worse, echo or um, not having any sound. So I'm going to switch over my camera and then go through this book. And I'm going to concentrate mostly at the measuring thing because we had lots of questions the live Trish and I did last week. Um, but if there's anything else you find interesting, do let me know. It is like a real wealth of um, knowledge. And I will read some ex excerpts, excerpts if I can talk tonight, and also show you lots of really interesting images which help with um, understanding how things work. And if you're my membership, I've just put a community post um, up. So if you're still not quite sure about certain pages on this page, pay of this book afterwards, then do let me know in the post I just done and um, I will share them. And I'm glad I sound fine, Astrid. And hello, Dori, lovely to have you again as well. So I'm going to switch over now and then have a look at this book. So you can see this is sizing, pattern construction and grading for women's and children's wear. It's written by Philip Koenig. He, I think, was I'm gonna now show how I've done my research. He was British, I believe, but also worked in Australia. Um, I think and he really was really interested in how to make sizes work from a professional um, wholesale and just ready to bear um, point of sale um, so it's all about actually um, making sizes the same over different shops and all the pitfalls but that also makes it really interesting as a dressmaker for yourself of you know by, by clothing sizes don't really work for us most of the time it's an incredibly in-depth book and at the moment this seems to be out of stock everywhere so i apologize i always pick books which you can't find however a few weeks ago i could see four or five copies um so it might just be that people saw the post i've put up and bought it straight away so do keep an eye out for it because it does come up and it's normally under 20 pounds so it's um affordable uh, but it is a real it's the most in-depth book i've ever seen on sizing as a philosophy as a scientific method and also as a practical guide so you can see the if i hold it up again you can see the contents are quite in depth so we got a list of size charts we got um lots of tables but when we got sizing construction size codes british standard sizes so that is a little bit outdated because it's from the 1950s so the heights are very different and stuff but it still explains the principle of how sizing works and why it doesn't work for most of us then measuring technique and measurement and sizes and that's what i'm going to concentrate on because that's a really fascinating in-depth um 
chapter also using anatomy. So that's really interesting. And um, the sizing for children's fair. So that's really interesting for those of you who want to make um, clothes for your own children um, or want to start a little business making children's clothes or children's pattern. Again, 1950s, so the fit is slightly different. Um, I've tried other older children's pattern books and they have very tight arms. And they have a whole chapter on the workroom stand so on the mannequin um, which is actually quite fascinating if maybe not for tonight and then they have a whole chapter of over 20 pages on basic pattern construction then over 15 pages on basic sleeve construction which i think is pretty impressive color co instruction again that becomes more like um, a basic drafting book and then they also have lots of pattern grading so it's a really good in-depth book um I, as i said but i think this is the book a lot of normal pattern cutting books are based on so whether you like Winifred aldrich um maybe natalie bray Hilary Campbell, I think a lot of them are based on this book and I'm going to zoom in a little bit more so you can hopefully see the details. Let me know if you want me to zoom in. I will monitor the chat but I will just go through it so um, I can concentrate on it and let's also try to not get too much of a reflection on it because this is all going to be black and white so it's slightly <laughs> YouTube unfriendly but um, hopefully still instructive. I wanted to quickly read you just a little paragraph from the introduction, but I found it really interesting how he describes it. Um, the development of the clothing industry is bound up with the problem of sizing for ready-made clothing. It is a basic problem and one which confronts a maker upper when he orders his first workroom stand. In this respect, the maker of ready-made mates differs from a bespoke tailor and private dressmaker who are concerned in making clothes for individual people of various shapes, sizes and posture. So it describes perfectly what we always come up against um, as people who make their own clothes. If you buy a sewing pattern or ready to make clo clothes, they never fit because they're not made for individuals, they're made for a workroom stand. So it's sort of stuff we always highlight, but it's quite nice to see it written down even 50 years ago, um, actually 70 years ago. And he's very um, critical of how things have done. So there's a whole chapter of the history and how it's developed, why it doesn't work and stuff like that. So that's really interesting if you're interested in theory and history of sizing. And then he's got whole measurements charts. Everything is in inches. So this is a great book for you Americans and um, for us metric people um, it's slightly more tricky but you can sort of get the gist of it. But what I love is these charts and this is the first of many charts and this literally just describes um, the standard size. Um, so this is a sort of standard size everything is based on and you can see most of us probably don't look like that and this is why it clothes don't work for us but it is really interesting how he basically the hip girth so it's the hip measurement we talk the high hip girth the the waist the bust when he does things like neck to bust across chest width bust prominence so this is really in-depth measuring even like the arm side with the elbow girth and the body rise the arm side to waist which is really going to tell you how deep your arm is um, a really interesting in-depth measurement it's really good to see it transferred on the body so you can see how it all works so that's a really good um, table or diagram on just to see where everything sits and it goes in even more detail so this is just the first of many because this is just where he basically shows you what the basic um, standard size I don't even know what it means, standard size. I think it's a, they basically measured 12,000 people and this was the average. So it's of course, you know, it's maybe one or two percent of people. But what is fascinating is the tables like this. So this is a basic ease allowance. So quite often Trisha and I talk about ease and garment ease versus drafting ease. Um, but this just um, shows you 
is a really good sort of basic guide on if you, for example, wanted to do a basic dress, how much ease you have on the bust, um, suits, coats, skirts, and slacks. Um, so it's all that might be slightly outdated because we fit our trousers differently now on our um, pants. But it basically gives you a sort of different ease amounts and where you put your ease. So you have less ease in certain places. Um, so it's again really helpful paper, um, table, especially if you're making clothes for other people. Um, or even you're making um, made to measure clothes and you want, you know, a skimming dress you can use for ease charts like that. And Natalie, who is on Instagram, she's called Natalie C. Sews. Um, she's an Australian dress and costume maker and she recommended this book and she loves it because whenever she's making clothes for different sizes or costumes, she can just refer back to it. So even if it's from the 19th, um, 50s and 60s, I think it was updated. Um, the principles behind it are not outdated. Um, some of the fit might be, or not, I mean, how it's, how our bodies are fitted, all this sort of stuff. Um, the sizing are outdated, but the principles of how much ease we want roughly for a, um, a skirt or a dress is still, for basic ones, more or less the same. There's more stuff on standard sizes and things like that, which aren't really that interesting to us. Um, but it's still interesting just to read about, um, you know, where it all comes from. I, some of it I just flick through. The really fascinating subject, whether you are making clothes for yourself or whether you're making clothes for other people. And this the whole book is quite, um, it is an advanced book. So if you're just getting out, starting out this pattern cutting and making and sewing, I would ignore all this for a bit longer and just concentrate on designing and drafting and wearing your clothes and then working out what you still need to learn because a lot of this stuff is more, if you're either making clothes for other people, if you're like me, just um, really fascinating by the subject and I know a lot of you as well. Um, or if you're starting to make maybe um, clothes for friends or you're wanting to get your fit right. So chapter four is all about measuring technique, measurements and sizes. So I'm going to go through it in detail in a minute. Um, but it basically, um, what they do is they mark certain points on the body that, and where possible mark them with reference to points on the skeleton. And then they actually um, measure. So you have really precise measurements of your body and he explains it all. Um, but now if I just show you, these are fantastic diagrams. So there is a sort of anatomy. So it's like uh, anybody who is in the science sector will rec uh, recognize it. But basically just shows you um, where our bones is and how it relates. And these are actually really important for things like um, where your neckline is. So your neckline at the back sits on your um, cervical, which is, if you have a look on the next page, hopefully, it's basically the seventh cervical vertebra. That's where your basic neck sits on your block. Um, so if you feel it on your back neck, it's basically the most protruding part of your neck. So you can really feel your vertebra at the back where it pops out. That is, for example, your high neck point at the back. And then again, on the front, your high neck point, the center front, is exactly above where your um, clavicles meet. So again, it's very easy to see and then feel it on your own body where your high neck point is on the center front. And even things like shoulder points, where basically the shoulder meets um, your armhole, Again, I explained, but they are exactly where our acromion bone is. So if you feel again at the top of your shoulder, you have a bone, a flat bone, and that's exactly where your um, basic arm size is. Now a note, things like these are actually like even the armhole point. That's a general point. I like my tiny bit more in because it's more flattering because I've got quite wide shoulders for my, bite, uh, for my build. But it's a really good experience explanation of the general drafting principles and then you can make design decisions to fit the fashion later on 
uh, but this is just a really it's a real scientific method and that's what he talks quite a lot is that a lot of drafting methods don't have the science behind it so they really concentrate on the science science behind it and again look here is quite interesting um they are actually highlighting the there are our thigh goes into our pelvic as the level of greatest lateral projection but of course depending on your thigh muscles that might be slightly lower so a skeleton can only get you so far and um, but it's a really good starting point and just understanding where it is and again you can see the average base level and that is exactly sort of at the bottom of um our skeleton of our rib cage on the skeleton but again personally it can be you know as an individual point you can but it's probably quite a few of you who say oh that doesn't quite work for me and that's perfectly fine as well what well, is really interesting seeing these points on a real person and it's very it's very sort of 1950s maybe late 50s photographs but they are great so you can see exactly how they've marked the neckline so starting with the seven vertebra and when they marked so followed it to the front and marked the point above the um clavicle and then they use dotted lines and they actually use a metal like a neck band to mark it all out you can also see how they've marked the if I've moved up how they've moved the armhole point and then for example that line which is our seam line he actually says you just draw it in in the convention line which is the top of the shoulder and then they also mark things like um the bust curve and i'm gonna show you that in a bit more detail because it's actually really interesting so they mark the underarm side and that's used with a pair of knitting needle of all things to work out the depth of the arm side so you basically use a um your eye and the measurement so most of us will need to ask somebody to do it for us and um, but you can then work out how deep your arm hole is and that sort of sounds quite scientific and if you're just starting out i wouldn't worry about it but later on if you for example always have issues with armholes being too baggy or being access um at the back or the front the depth of your armhole side can make a difference and again what is quite interesting because we normally this measurements always say that you measure completely level what he actually said is if you if you for example very large busted on the bust line you might actually have to um measure the slight angle which goes from the point just underneath our shoulder blades at the back and then that line goes to the point where the widest bust measurement meet vertically and um horizontally um which is on our nipples on our bust points and then also vertically basically works out exactly the width there but that line together with that point there can actually give us the most exact measurement so this is the stuff um it might work for you it might not but if you're always struggling with getting the right bust measurement if it's always a bit tight you know this is sort of lots of very subtle variations i haven't seen in any other book on how to get things right then we have lots of size charts so again this is more you know useful if you're making clothes for other people and if you're working in inches so for me this would be probably more work than it's worth is if i try to use these and let's flick through all of those and let's see what else i've marked oh this double page this might be quite interesting um I'm going to put it on the membership for you if you're interested let me know this is just a full list of how you mark it so again bust curve and um, the measurer stood facing and a little to the subjects right so we haven't got that but that's how it should be done the tape was passed under the subject's right arm and drawn around the bust over landmarks with low busted subjects the tape was allowed to slope down at the front with the rear of the tape held in position on the lowest point of the shoulder plate the reading was taken with zero um 
override breast with minimal constrictions. So there was no ease added at all. Um, so they basically describe each point they pointed out in the charts how to exactly you should measure it. So it's not as relevant as us making clothes for ourselves. It's relevant if you want to measure other people so you get the correct measurements. And it's also just really interesting to read exactly how it should be done because it's very precise. And then they also show us again visually exactly where it should be measured, how it should be measured, um, you know, how tight and things like that. Um, where you need to stand and when they use quite clever devices on how to where did i see that sorry hold a second on how to do the shoulder angle and stuff like that but you can see that's a really in-depth so you can actually visually see how things are measured um yeah so you can see they actually move use squares so you exactly get the heights long and that's the thing what trisha was saying she likes measuring herself because as soon as somebody else do, does it it's just a tape measure you know do you measure that straight to the floor, for example, or do you curve along the calf? You can get real differences. So this is just really showing you why it's important and how ideally you get it right. But most of us don't have all this equipment. So it's just using your eye and your, maybe even your ruler, but just checking that you always have like straight lines and right angles. So these are all our charts and more description on how to do it then there's a whole section on children's clothes and then the next section so it's all I'm measuring so far is all about basic pattern construction and he goes through constructing a basic block um constructing like a moulage or a draped block and also um constructing lots of different fits so it's a really interesting book and um, so i'm going to show you a few bits which I've never seen in any other books and which really go into the science of um, drafting and systems and pattern construction. And I've marked a few bits I wanted to read to you. The accuracy of any cutting system depends mainly on the accuracy of the measurement. And the acknowledged unreliability of a tape measure helped to increase the popularity of proportionate measurement systems. Um, so you might have come across those in sort of older vintage books where they use them, um, but you just take a few measurements and then everything is proportionate based and most of those are still work the same. So the one I work as well, I don't take all the measurement systems, he does, I take less and then pass with a base on proportionate. And that's because the more you measure, of course, it's great if you're precise, but if you're imprecise, everything goes off kilter. So from the sort of 19th, I think 18th and 19th century, these measuring systems were developed. And what is also interesting, what he mentions is, any drafting systems were also largely influenced by the particular fashion of its period. So that seam placement and suppression were an, an integral part of a draft. And you really notice if you look at different drafting books from different periods, they have like, for example, a much more fitted and waistline in 1940s um, book or slightly different shoulder points. So it's really fascinating, but also be aware of if you're using um, patterns from different um, decades or systems from different um, decades. And he's very critical that basically, um, most pattern systems actually aren't based on any signs. Um, so they have lots of descriptive data and lots of rules, but they don't actually say why you have to take this. And I, I, I realized that when I was doing my um, trouser block course, that I was trying to really work out, tell you why everything is done. And most drafting systems just say, move up, move side, you know, do this, but it doesn't actually tell you the science behind it and I found that quite interesting because it's always annoyed me with drafting systems but they don't actually tell you why you need to measure it. Um, so he sort of goes into principle a bit like that and it's also something I always try to do in my tutorials so quite a few of you are on my membership and I hope you're enjoying it and um, but if you haven't and if you do like to always understand how things work then you might like my membership. I think there's a link in the description and I'm capping the um, membership in a week and a half. So you can join now. I've only got about 18 places left and then I want to sort of cap it so I can actually 
make sure I answer your questions in the community and you know have enough time to spend with all of you. Um, so the knowing why is always what I love to do. And if you'd like to, then do please join me. And I know a lot of who you of who are watching, you all like the sort of understanding. Oh, why does it work? One thing I really loved about it, and there's something I talked a bit with um when we talk about different fitting and skirts and stuff, is how everything is related. And he makes it really clear, which is lovely. So it's just about how different 3D shapes, um, 3D shapes respond to different 2D shapes and how that's sort of related to the pattern. And what he says as well, that quite often like you do things really equally, do you know how this is basically darts and how they're done really equally if you would just do it on like the perfect round shape. But of course our bodies might be a lot more abstract or unba not unbalanced, but there might be that you need more fitting in the back or the front. So your patterns don't look committed um, um, geometrical. So it's a really nice way of, sort of describing how it all relied, um, relates. And also how um, if you take the whole body, it's always easy to do a shaping for one one cylinder um rather than two at the same time which is why most of us we have a separate bodice and skirt block and then you combine them and knead it but it makes fitting a lot easier and then he does a whole series of like a foundation pattern a basic pattern and he sort of shows you um just how to draft it it's actually really fascinating because it's so in-depth then he actually goes through the exact drafting process um, which I think looks quite similar to others I've seen it. So it looks quite similar to Natalie Bray. Bray. He's got an extra dart here. Um, it looks quite similar to the one I use. I'm actually going to try this out at some point, um, just out of interest. I haven't tried this one out. Natalie says it's Natalie C. So says it's very good, but um, you can see they're very in depth. So really good for um, if you're trying to work it all out. And then he actually shows you how to add ease as well. So the places where you need to make ease. So it's a bit like adapting your sewing pattern. Um, and he goes to the same for the skirt. So you can see how many patterns there are, but also how in-depth they are. I've never seen a book before that drafting a skirt block took up a page and a half in that much depth. And I hope I'm all making sense. Do let me know if you've got any questions. You can see how, again, how seam allowance is added, how ease is added. Um, so it's a really interesting in-depth book. I'm just going to flick through. This is the basic sleeve I use, a so very similar Winifred Ultra uses as well. So you can see um, how it's all related. But he also does a really nice fitted sleeve. Um, so it becomes more a general pattern cutting book here different type of drafting a sleeve um, so lots of different um, versions of doing it and also for different stages so this is for a younger girl so maybe a, a child then you got one for a young teenager and then you, one you got for a junior miss which I think is maybe like a 16 year old um, so you can see how it's all related he does his own version of a dolman sleeve um, which again looks similar to other books I've seen but he explains it in quite a lot of depth how everything is related which I like and we've got color construction as well so these again this is where it goes more into um, other pattern cutting books so you know this is the stuff you would normally the only stuff you'd find in normal pattern cutting books but he puts it on as an add-on he does trousers as well I think often um, trousers or pants from that period are very different um, fit from what we do normally because they are a lot less fitted. They are basically, um, I think there's an example here, they're quite often based more or less on a skirt pattern which is then extended out, which is of course how trousers developed. Um, And then you can see that trouser block, um, which looks quite similar to tell you the truth to Winifred Altrich. Um, so I would be slightly, it has always got a slight um, 
droopy bottom issue from what I've seen. Um, so that's not my favorite, but apart from that, um, it's still very much in depth. It's a great book. And if that wasn't enough, so we've done measuring, we've gone um, drafting, and now the next thing is a whole section on grading. So, you know, this isn't the most exciting YouTube tutorial if you're not a pattern cutting um, nerd, but if you are, um, it's just a really useful book to have. Um, so again, grading, of course, if you are um, making lots of garments, you send it off to be graded, but it's actually really expensive. So a lot of the time, if you just like, so for example, making dresses for four people, they're all size up and down, you can use this to grade the garments and then make alterations later on. So you can see it actually goes through the whole process again, really nice, a lot of like benefit alters again, and they show maybe a really quick page, but without all the information. So this is really a book for the industry, and therefore it's a lot more in depth than other books I've seen. Natalie Bray is similar, but she concentrates a lot more on the actual designing of making of clothes. So she does the first section like this, and then, but it, it's a lot smaller, and then she concentrates on designing and design principles. Um, so if you can't get this book, Natalie Bray, which I'm gonna show you how that looks like. So just to recap what I've been looking at the whole time is, sizing, pattern construction and grading for women's and children's garments and it's written by Philip Koenig, or Koenig. and he I think was very much a proper um, pattern cutter of the scientific method so it's really well researched and he's sort of the London College of Fashion they have a whole department which has been trying to sort of um, work out clothes which actually fit us by scanning lots of people so that's the continuation of what he started um so this is another book i recommend which is more easily available which is dress pattern designing the basic principles of cut and fit and that is by natalie bray and that if i quickly just show you the first few pages you can see i've used this um so you can see it's not in as in depth um but it's got similar amount of information because again it's made for the industry and not for um fashion design students as much so slightly different um focus which means you go into more depth um if you're running a wholesale studio or something everything needs to work perfectly so these are this is these are my favorite sort of parts of this book um i apologize that this book isn't as readily available as i thought it would be um but it's worth keeping a google search for that or something and it might have also put you up you might think oh i actually now i've seen the inside this is not for me and i always find that this um i sometimes buy vintage pattern cutting books just because they look quite interesting and when you get some you think oh I can't actually use a single page of that so hopefully this will help you make a decision on whether this book is for you and or not and if you have any questions do let me know um and Luan Edwards is saying I would love to get this book as I have to enlarge the bust always yes yeah, so it might be Luan that you just you might be using sewing patterns or drafting your own i'm not quite sure um but what this book is really good at describing why things might not fit you and um how you know how everything is related and how standard sizes how which size actually works for but of course especially the bust size you know you might be exactly the same height the same hip the same waist they have a completely different base and it actually talks quite a lot about how it doesn't actually work for stuff like that because there's lots of different variations of bust, hip and waist, just to name three, and then all the other factors in play for making things fit. Um, and Laura is saying the Natalie Bray one is really good as well. Yeah, I agree, Natalie. So, um, Laura. 
so this one is one of my favorite books again this is more in depth than that well i think a lot of the modern ones are really in depth as well but this has a slight different focus but it's more for sort of um oh, it's hard to describe it's it's for fashion designer pattern cutter dressmakers and of course in the 1940s it would be more made to measure clothing as there is like in contemporary clothing so this is actually i did altogether five years at Central St. Martin studying fashion and pattern cutting at postgraduate level and we didn't really talk about this as much because it's you you know 99% is ready to wear um unless you hold couture which is tiny so even ready to mate is made for your stand it might be beautifully fitted to the stand but has no relations to different individual sizes so this is something I've learned from looking at these books which is why I'm so always so fascinated and passionate about it and want to share it with you as well as so of understanding how all of this relates and you know why clothes don't fit us and why making your own is so um exciting once you got your block and how you then can design just anything you want and Verbi Design Studio is saying Gillian I think Gillian I'm loving the idea of explaining the why behind it all. Thanks, Charlotte. You're very welcome. Yeah, it's just a lot of books, you know, it's fine for a column where I just say, do this, this and this. You don't really need to understand when you're starting out why that angle will make it fit. But as you sort of make more clothes and things don't fit, understanding why the angle of a collar follows the shape of your neck rather than a straight rectangle will help you fit it perfectly and these are this is really a book which is all about how our body works and you know how clothes can work Okay. Oh, great. Oh, it's good. Okay, Cynthia, sorry. Yeah, I think my phone got confused. So you can hear me now. Fantastic. Um, I was just saying, my mother interrupted as usual. And I was just going to say, I hope you enjoyed this review as much as I love this book. And um, if you're my membership, do let me know if you want a close up of a page or something, because on YouTube, you know, the quality is never that fantastic. Um, and if you are in my membership, we have until Saturday the 15th to join me. And then I'm going to cap the numbers, I think, until the new year. So if you ever want to know more about the why and learn how to pass and cut and stitch beautiful clothes, then do join me. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and thank you so much, everybody, for joining in the chat. And, um, let me letting me know what you think about it and agreeing with me natalie bray um and if you have any no more questions then i will say bye for now and i'll be back next thursday with another live stream on checks and strikes stripes so completely unrelated to that but tomorrow on my membership i'm doing half an hour sort of master guide on cutting out and stitching with stripes it's one of those topics where i said oh yeah i can do it in 10 minutes and then half an hour later i still haven't said anything i have to say about checks and stripes but hopefully what i have said will help you cut out and stitch perfectly matched claire mccardle inspired garments or any check and stripe garments so that'll be out tomorrow and then i'll be back on here next thursday to actually go through some really, really nice vintage examples of using stripes and checks in expected and unexpected variations so that's it for me um good night here in the uk and otherwise enjoy the rest of your thursday bye everybody